I was buried beneath my bed, lost without hope of redemption, blind in my need for sin, oh, but God, crushed by the weight of my fear, living the life I created, digging my grave without no Oh, but God, oh, but God, rich in mercy, how you love me, too much to let me stay lost. My salvation sent from heaven, nailing my sin to the cross, oh, but God, you gave me truth worth. I traded my chains for your freedom. You were the one that I needed, oh, but God. Resurrected my heart from the My rescue came through like the morning. Now this is my sure testimony, oh, but God. Thank you, guys. Straight Street is visiting with us today, so we're grateful that they're here and leading us in worship this morning. Uh, so be sure to thank them later after the worship service, not during the sermon. That's probably not the best time. I have a few announcements as we get started this morning, uh, just things that are happening in the life of Bethany this week, and maybe a little long further in advance so that you can mark your calendars. There's lots more information in your bulletin. So if you didn't grab a bulletin, like if you came in that door over there and you're wondering where the bulletins are, they're over here. Um, oh, and there are some over here. Never mind. Grab yourself a bulletin. They're all over the place, apparently. Um, I just want to say a few thank yous to begin. There's been some things that have happened around Bethany lately that have been all because of people stepping up and doing lots of things. So 
We had a big women's ministry event here. We had New Day Meal this past week. Uh, There's construction going on, and I know there are people who removed carpet from stairs. It was not a simple task, just saying. Um, And this happens every week, setting up and tearing down and setting up and tearing down. So um, there will be people who will help this coming week to set up for the bell choir. Just a lot of ways that people are standing in the gap uh, and making wonderful things happen around Bethany. So thank you to everyone who's contributed to those things. By way of announcement, there is a lot of Save the Dates coming up. So, Barb, put the first list. Oh, yes, Wednesday. That's the first Save the Date. Save the Date for Wednesday. Wednesday night is homemade pizzas. I was going to say it and then thought that was wrong. And that's a crowd favorite. So be sure to come for homemade pizzas because they are delish. Uh, That's at 5.30. And then after... Um, our meal. The youth and the kids have activities in their respective areas, so be sure to come for those things. Um, Also, we are saving the date from May 15th. That is coming up quicker than we think. Uh, We are going to have a mental health awareness event that partners with South High School, with Wilson, um, with Rogers Behavioral Health, Mental Health America. Am I missing anyone, Jill? That's about it, but that's a lot. So this is going to be a big event. There's probably going to be a walk involved. There'll be food because we're Bethany and we like food. Uh, So there will be lots of ways that we can all be engaged in bringing awareness uh, to mental health issues um, and helping promote good mental health in our community with the teachers and the different um, organizations locally. So pay attention as the details get ironed out. We will get them out to you in the bulletin, in our emails, and in announcements. Um, Also, now this is another 15. So this is how I'm remembering them. May 15, mental health awareness event. June 15, brat fry. So there you go. That's going to support the Sheboygan uh, Food Bank's Meals for Longfellow Elementary School. Um, Barb wants you to mark it on your calendar because she's going to need lots of volunteers and lots of donations. So if you're looking at your calendar and you're wondering if you should hang around Sheboygan on the 15th of June, do it Um, and help us out at the Brat Fry. And the last kind of save the dates in July. See, I'm skipping right on through the summer. Uh, July 21st through the 26th, our youth, this is a really old picture um, (laughs) from a couple years ago, I think. Um, Our youth are going on the mission trip and we would really love to extend the invitation to grown-ups that want to come with them. We have space in our trip for grown-ups to come, uh, and we need the chaperone help as well. I mean, there are already some parents who are planning to go with, uh, but if you're available and would like to go with this group to Louisville and serve in that area, we would love to have you come with us. In particular, we need some guys. Um, We have a group of high school boys who are awesome, But it would be really great if they had an adult guy with them (laughs) while they're there. Uh, So if you are willing to go on the trip, if that's something you want more information about, come see me. Um, You can talk to Terry. Raise your hand, Terry. Terry's been on the trip before, so she can tell you what it's kind of like. Um, Or you can call the office, and we'll get you connected with the right folks about that. All right. Our mission of the month this month is the Good News Jail and Prison Ministry. You don't have to put anything on your calendar about that. That's right now. Um, this is a wonderful organization that makes sure that there is hope in a hard place. Um, this is a way that spiritual needs can be met in jail and so and in prison. So if you would like to support the work that the chaplains do uh, there and all the volunteers, uh, you can add that on your offering envelope or you can write it in the memo of your check or designate it on your online giving. That's one way we can support the mission that happens in the jails. All right. There are other announcements. They're all in your bulletin, which are everywhere, as we've discussed. Uh, And I'm sure that all of those announcements and all those dates are rattling around in your head. So are all the dates for your work life and your home life and your doctor's appointments and your dentists and whatever else is happening in your head. And so I invite you to just take a deep breath with me. And we are going to take just a few moments of silence to let our minds quiet a bit. 
all of those things will be waiting for us on the other side of worship. Uh, Let's allow ourselves some space to settle our hearts and our minds so that we can worship together. Gracious God, we come to you today uh, delighted uh, that you give us so many things. God, we know that there is much that is a part of our world that is evidence of your um, love for us, your care for us, and we offer our praise and our worship together today. We ask that you would soften our hearts You would open our ears. Help us to be receptive to what you have for us this morning. And God, help us, the words that we say, the actions, the ways that we engage this morning, might they be pleasing to you, God. You are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Would you stand as we worship together in song with Straight Street? To the one who spoke the world into existence, to the one who sent his son to pay a price that we could not, for the grace that God has given us, a grace that you cannot buy, that you can take. What a wonderful God we have, and where would we be without the grace that comes from God? Thank you. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Who loves mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King of glory. Who shakes the holder with holy thunder? Who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder? The King of glory.
This is amazing grace. This is a thing that you says, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. In that psalm, the phrase his love endures forever appears 36 times, or excuse me, 26 times. I think they're trying to give you a message that his love endures forever. This song is the same thing. It's just a reminder that no matter where you've been, no matter where you're going or what you've done, God loves you and he loves you forever. All you need to do is turn to him. What a great guy. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. Oh, he is good, he is above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise. Sing has been reborn His love endures forever Sing praise Sing praise Sing praise Sing praise Forever God is faithful Forever God is strong Forever God is with us Love 
cast my mind to Calvary, where Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior on that cursed tree.
pray with me? Uh, Gracious God, we come to you full of praise. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. God, we ask that you would hear these praises and that you would see them as good and that you would help us to be reminded of all the other ways that we could praise, all the things that we haven't named yet. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We have many people joining us online. I don't know if you're aware, but most Sundays we have 20-ish screens joining us on, in worship. And I say screens because sometimes that's two or three people. Um, often it's a couple of people. Um, so I would love for us to turn, and there's a camera right at the back. If you could wave, you can wave at our tech volunteers too. Um, wave to say hello, that they are part of our worshiping community, and then take a moment to greet one another this morning. good to greet one another, to catch up. There are some folks who've been away who are back. There are folks who have birthdays today. Vi's birthday today. So be sure to wish her happy birthday during cafe and she can pretend the donut holes are her cake. Oh, well, that was my birthday was last week. It's all done now. <laughs> We have, all right, we can be done with that. No, just kidding. Um, so we will come together um, to celebrate those sorts of things. And one of the ways we can do that is through prayer. We bring our celebrations to God. We bring our concerns to God. So I invite you to pray with me this morning. A gracious and loving God, you give us so much. You not only provide our daily bread, but so many more joyful things as well. God, we are blessed with the warmth of our beds, of our homes. 
the food in our pantries and refrigerators, that we have so many clothes that most of us have to get rid of some sometimes, the jobs that we have, the friends that we talk with. God, we are blessed with art and music, the sound of laughter, the birds that sing in the morning as springtime has come, the green grass, the buds on the trees, the sunny yellow daffodils. God, you bless us. You give us so much that we can delight in. Every day of our lives speaks of how generous you are. You delight in us and in your creation by giving us so much to delight in. God, we thank you for these uncounted blessings. And we confess that we don't always count them the ways that we should. God, we come to you today grateful not only for the many things that you give us, but for the forgiveness that you offer to us. Because we confess that we have been ungrateful, at times unthinking, numb to the gifts all around us. There are times when we have chosen drivenness or ambition or our self-interest instead of focusing on the good and choosing delight. So God, this morning, we bring to you the brokenness within ourselves, asking both for your forgiveness and for your loving correction. Might we bring these confessions to you in the silence of this moment, trusting in your faithfulness to us. God, you have proven over and over and over again your patience with us and your unmatched forgiveness. As far as the east is from the west, so far have our transgressions been removed from us, we know. Yet another reason for us to celebrate and to delight. Might we not take this forgiveness for granted? Might it move us to transformed lives and new ways of being that make us look more and more like your son, Jesus. God, as we remember the ways that you have gifted us with this creation and the ways that you delight in us, graciously providing what we need, we come to you and ask that you would continue to provide. The fact that we are blessed people doesn't remove our need to trust in you for all that we are in need of today and will be in need of tomorrow. We pray that you will teach us that trust. In those ways where we are anxious, remind us that you provide. In the places where we are struggling, give us strength and courage to continue following you. God, we lift to you the situations that we struggle with, or the people that we know are struggling, uh, whether that's with health concerns that affect mental or physical health, or with circumstances that are simply challenging and weigh heavy on our hearts and minds. Lord, as we lift these circumstances and these people to you in the silence of this next moment, we ask that you would provide what is needed for today the strength, the courage, the peace, the rest, the protection, the assurance that you are with in each circumstance and with each person. God of grace, give peace to each broken relationship. Give healing to the sick and the suffering and those who are undergoing medical treatment. Give encouragement to those who feel a bit battered. Strength to those who are stumbling and rest to the weary, we pray, by your spirit. 
Might those in need today experience your presence, even in the most complex and difficult circumstances, find places of delight. Might your love surround and enfold them, and more than anything else, teach all of us to recognize that in Jesus, the true bread and the true cup, that he is what we need. Don't let us be satisfied only by those things in this world. Teach our hearts to be delighted ultimately in Jesus. As we experience that delight, empower us to be those who share it with the world. Teach us to be Christ's hands providing daily bread for those in need. To be ambassadors showing others the love and care of God. Teach us to tune our hearts to goodness. Give us hearts that see the things that are worthy of celebration and delight and to enjoy the gifts that you give us, returning back to you thanks and praise. God, we do all of this and we ask all of these things in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. 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 We offer to God our prayers, but we also offer to God all of us. Um, Our treasure, our time, our talents, our gifts. And so in this time of offering, um, we give to God those things that we entrust to his care. And we trust that God will use those gifts in mighty and good ways, ways that we can't imagine, but we also trust that there will be enough left for us. Um, I'm reminded the ways that the whole of Israel left their fields fallow. That's a lot of trust, and we trust um, God with our resources as well when we give back. Uh, So there are many ways that you can give to the work that happens here at Bethany. Uh, The plate is in that corner right over there if you brought your offering with you. But I invite you, as has become our practice, to hold out your hands in front of you and imagine those things that you might offer to God in your hands, resting in your hands. Uh, Some way that you'll spend your time, that you'll use your gifts, a financial gift that you give. And we offer these together to God. Gracious God, take these gifts, these things that we offer, take all of us and use us for your good and for your glory, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, we continue in the season of the resurrection uh, in the days and the weeks that follow after the grand and glorious day of Easter morning uh, when women and other disciples uh, came to the abrupt encounter and the good news that Jesus was no longer dead. And in contrast to the season of Lent leading up to the day of the resurrection, we were on hard roads as a series. But since the resurrection, we've been looking at celebration roads, things in the course of our lives as followers of Jesus that we take time to remember and to celebrate because so much of life uh, kind of stifles the good celebrations. And so today we continue on the series of celebrations along the resurrection road. And today, if you haven't already noticed, uh, we are considering the, ce- the celebration of delight or joy. They can be used interchangeably. And in the course of life, we're privileged to experience different kinds of delight that leave a mark of joy upon our hearts and in our hearts. And so today we visit a key moment uh, in the life of uh, one disciple uh, known as Thomas. So I invite you to follow along as we read from the Gospel of John this morning. 
keeping in mind that Thomas was not present when Jesus appeared as a group, to the group as a whole, on the evening of the day of the resurrection. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. Let's say that together. We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. And though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Let's read that together. Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. And Thomas said, let's say it, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. And Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, as mentioned and all re- as we've noticed, Thomas was, again, not with the other disciples on the evening of the resurrection when Jesus appeared to them as a group. Where was Thomas? We don't know. We don't know where he was. He was likely hidden away somewhere, overcome with grief and disillusionment because things didn't turn out the way he had hoped or expected, and perhaps even was cowering someplace in fear. We can certainly assume that delight and joy were not part of his mood or his demeanor. And when Thomas was informed that they had seen that Jesus was alive, the emotional fog blacked out any positive feeling and faith. His own words, unless I see the marks of the nails in his hand and put my in his hand and put my hand in his side, I, I will not believe. He was in a fog. He was in a place that was the opposite of delight and joy. But a week later, Thomas is gathered with the other disciples when Jesus appears. And greets them with those words we've read. So let's say them together. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. And then Jesus turns his attention to Thomas. Not in condescending way, but very direct. Thomas, reach out your hand and and touch the wounds in my hand. Thomas, reach out your hand and put it in my side. Thomas, stop doubting and believe. And just like that, in a moment, he shifts from probably despair and disillusionment to the opposite. And he proclaims those words that we have read together, and I invite you to say them again with me, my Lord and my God, my Lord and my God. Few simple words, but they're profound words. Not only is the significance of these words, number one, a statement of faith and belief, boom, The power of Jesus to transform a soul and a heart and a mind that is lost in the fog of unbelief and drive through it with clarity. So in that very real moment, two dynamic events occurred. One was this statement of faith, this statement of belief, but the other is is that it's a statement of delight. My Lord and my God, not just a A statement of fact, my Lord and my God. But with that statement of faith and belief is also some passion. There's delight there. 
So whatever disillusionment was there, whatever despair was there, whatever fear was there, whatever was making that fog very thick is stripped away in a moment and he makes a statement of faith that's also a statement of delight. My Lord and my God, life has changed. I have changed in an instant, in a moment. Because you're my Lord and my God, you have the power to do that. So, do you hear in those simple words, my Lord and my God, do you get a sense of Thomas's delight? He went from despair. He went from disbelief in, in a fraction of a second. He's now in a place of delight. That's awesome and that is incredible. And this newfound faith provides the basis of that delight. So that the dead Jesus is no longer a dead Jesus. Indeed, as we shared on Easter Sunday, Christ is risen. What do you say? He is risen indeed. Yes, Jesus is alive. And there is something that is delightful about being able to say those words in a world that is filled with so much pain, so much death, so much despair, so much craziness, so much silliness. Jesus is alive. That's good news. That's delightful news. That is joyful news. And so the joyful moment of faith for Thomas in this instance, I believe, was permanently etched upon and within his own heart and his own mind. How could he ever, in the course of life, whatever was to come before him, how could he ever forget that moment when he went from despair to delight? How could he ever forget that? I don't think he did. That moment of faith and delight permanently impacted the course of his life and his, the direction of his life. And undoubtedly, it would anchor him during future moments of disappointment, future moments of grief, and future moments of pain. Because that stuff is still part of this current life world experience. But undoubtedly, this moment would be anchored in his heart, on his heart, in his mind, and in his soul. And I believe in moments that were not delightful, that memory would provide strength and endurance. Or to use a more modern expression, This moment with Jesus would be for Thomas always his happy place. His happy place. No matter how dark the days would come in the future, no matter what challenges he would experience, Thomas knew where his happy place was. And it was remembering that moment when standing before Jesus, Jesus said, yeah, Thomas, go ahead, reach out. Touch the nails in my hands. Put your hand in my side, Thomas. You see, Thomas, it's real. You see, Thomas, it's not just a story that was made up to somehow cheer you up. No, I am here, Thomas. Reality has changed. Take delight in that, Thomas. Because you're going to need to draw from that when there are days to come that are not so delightful. I don't think it's a coincidence that the faith and the joy that Thomas experienced when he came to that moment of proclaiming my Lord and my God, I don't think it's a coincidence that Jesus, when he arrived that evening or that, at that gathering, that his first words to all of them and also to Thomas were the words, peace be with you. So Jesus comes, he appears, the doors are locked, they're, they're kind of hiding away, and Jesus appears, and his first words to them again, as they were on the night of the resurrection, were words of peace be with you. I don't think it's a coincidence that that's what Jesus starts off again in this second appearance. And then it follows his conversation with Thomas, and Thomas's transition point, my Lord and my God, because it seems that peace and delight go together. Oh, 
Often when there is peace, there is some measure of delight in that moment. And where there is delight, there often is a measure of peace. Interaction with each other. So I would assume that in that moment when Thomas declares, my Lord and my God, it was also in that context of the peace that Jesus announced when he arrived. Peace be with you led to my Lord and my God. The peace granted ended up to delight. In no way, in comparison to this biblical encounter, but this idea of delight or joy and peace. One of my, I, and unfortunately, God has blessed me with a lot of wonderful, delightful memories. And depending on different things that I go through, there's these different memories that come to mind. So that for those moments I go back and I relive the memories and in those places are this blend of a calmness, a peace, as well as delight. Being able to chuckle or to smile. One of those simple, not grand but very simple moments for me of delight occurred when I, my high school graduation and uh, when we were, our high, my high school graduation at the time was held in the, uh, on the, at the, in the stadium, the football stadium. And so there were um, two ob- aisles of stairs going down the stadium and, uh, and three different sections of seating. And so my, my half of the class was coming down one aisle and the other half was coming down the other aisle. And... Uh, as we were going down the steps uh, of the stadium to the field, um, I wasn't surprised that he was there, but I was surprised where he was located. Uh, it was my youth pastor who had had a significant impact upon my life and certainly one of the very key people in my life that God used in terms of discerning my call to ministry. So, as I'm walking down the, uh, my aisle of stairs, um, I look up and standing at the end of a row was Steve with this big smile on his face. And in that moment, I, w- I smiled too and as I passed by, you know, did a very quick, you know, one of these things uh, to engage each other. But the memory of that And the memory is in that moment of graduating from high school and knowing that uh, the rhythm and pace of life is going to change. It also brought a sense of assurance and peace. Steve was there. Now, that's not a my Lord and my God kind of moment that Thomas had, but it's still a moment in which God provides a memory that anchors. I've thought of that on various occasions in the course of my life, especially in times of change. Because my youth pastor, who had a profound impact on me, was standing there at the end of a row of seats as I walked by. Now, for you, you may have any number of other kinds of special moments that are locked away in your brain. And that when you go through a time of stress and when you go through a time of challenge and when you go through a time of difficulty, perhaps you can draw on those and and for a moment go to a happy place and smile and relive the joy and the delight even if the immediate circumstances you're in are not delightful, you can go to that delightful happy place. I think Thomas' experience with Jesus was the chief of all happy places for him. And he drew on that, I would assume, when he encountered lots of things in life. We all know that joyful highs of life do not persist. Over time, the lights of our lives can fade, and we easily can return to focusing on that which is not delightful. Our problems, our complaints, our frustrations, our challenges. 
And we can get so drawn into the cesspool of all of those things that it kind of shoves the delights to the side. But in moments of delight, when we recall a special moment, we're taken to the happy place. Those things that are etched permanently on our hearts, on our minds, and we experience some element of calm and peace and delight in the middle of things that are not always delightful. So I wonder how often Thomas returned to that happy place. I don't know. Although I'm hoping that one day in the kingdom, if I have the opportunity to sit down with Thomas over a, I don't know, will they serve coffee in heaven? I don't know. I'll take a white chocolate mocha latte. And sit down with Thomas and say, Thomas, how often, when you were in tough situations, did you go back to that happy place with Jesus? That moment when you were refusing to believe, and like that you were changed, and in your confession, my Lord and my God, how delightful did those words come out? How often? Did you go back to that time in order to draw strength for something you were going through? How often did you go to that happy place? So anyway, that's on my agenda if I get to have an agenda in the eternal kingdom. In this fallen world, we know that moments of delight and joy do not linger. But our memories of such moments are gifts that allow us to anticipate the time when delight is the constant norm. See, we can't even fathom that. What? How can I always be happy without having any fly in the ointment? It's hard to imagine that day because our days here get filled so much with the opposite. But when we have those memories that we're able to draw on, they're gifts. And those gifts remind us that there is a time coming when delight is going to be the norm. And not just an occasional moment. The Apostle John, in the book of Revelation, gives us a little bit of a glimpse of what that day may look like. So I want to read those words from Revelation 21. Because remember, when John is even writing these words, he's imagining this happy place because he's not in a happy place. He's exiled on the island of Patmos because he would teach about Jesus. Anyway, in the 21st chapter of Revelation, he writes, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. And he will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. And then he said, write this down. For these words are trustworthy and true. These are words of delight. These are the words of the new norm that will come. And so in the current reality, until that time comes, those special moments, those pla happy places, places are gifts that allow us to anticipate the time when delight, when joy 
is the norm and not just a special occasion or moment. And like Thomas on that day, I imagine that we will behold Jesus. And in those moments, we will be given our own opportunity to proclaim, My Lord and my God, with the greatest delight pouring forth from our souls. So, let's practice. Let's say, my Lord and my God, together one more time. My Lord and my God. Today, we come to communion. And I want you to view this whole process as an invitation of Jesus to delight in him. Thomas had the benefit of seeing with his physical eyes. We, we have to see at this point with the eyes of faith, but we know one day our eyes will behold him. So as we take bread and as we take the cup, those things that we hold and those things that we taste, we behold the presence of Jesus through the signs of the bread and the cup. For we believe that Jesus is spiritually present with us as we come to his table. And so we prepare, are prepared to meet him face to face at his coming. So the delight that we experience this morning is but a small sample of an overwhelming delight when we behold him face to face like Thomas did, and proclaim, my Lord and my God. As we come to supper today, we do so as those who remember that Jesus was sent of the Father into the world to take on our flesh and blood and to fulfill for us all obedience to the divine law, even to the bitter and shameful death of the cross and that by his life, death, resurrection, and ascension, Jesus has established for us a new and eternal covenant of grace and reconciliation that we might be accepted of God and never be forsaken by him. So not only do we come and remember that, we also come to have commune with the same Jesus who has promised to be with us to the very end of the age. And as we take the bread, he reminds us that he is the true heavenly bread that we must Abide in for the nourishment to life eternal. And in the cup he comes to us and reminds us that he's the true vine in whom we also must abide if we are to bear any fruits. And we also come in hope, believing that this cup and this bread is a foretaste. It is a sample of that greater feast of love that we shall participate in when his kingdom has fully come. And with unveiled face we shall behold him as he is and be made like unto him in all of his glory. We look forward with delight because we look back and we remember. And in these moments, Jesus is here to spiritually meet us. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that as you have died and you have risen, that you are coming again. We take delight in what will be. But as we wait in faith, we thank you for the moments of delight that we can draw on when life isn't always so delightful. As we come to the supper, thank you that you were willing to go to the ultimate extreme so that in your joy of your resurrection, we can take our highest delight. In your name we pray. Amen. So, we come to this table, and all folks who um, believe that Jesus is Lord, uh, baptized believers, are welcome to join us at the table. We have an open table. Um, and we'll talk about logistics, I realized, from the back of the room. We're going to spread these out a little bit so that we're in a different space. So we have to figure these things out together, but I've got a plan. 
I've got a plan. But you are all welcome to come to the table and enjoy this meal together. I would like for us to pray one last time. Uh, Gracious God, we know that you are the creator, the source of all life and goodness. You created heaven, the earth, and you have given us life and being. And you provide for us. God, we remember in this supper the sacrifice offered to us by our Savior Jesus for the sin of the whole world. And in the joy of his resurrection, we, in great expectation, look forward to his coming again. God, send your Holy Spirit on us, we pray, that the bread which we break and the cup which we bless might be to us the communion of the body and the blood of Jesus. Join us together, we pray, that we might attain the unity of the faith as all the grain was gathered from many fields into one loaf and the grapes from many hills into one cup. Grant, O Lord, that your whole church might soon be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. Even so, we pray, come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Our Lord Jesus, on the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and having given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup. After they had supped, and he said, This is the cup. Uh, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. As often as you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. The bread which we break is our communion with the body of Christ, and the cup which we bless is our communion with the blood of Christ. And so I'm going to move this little table. It's our logistics. It's family, right? So if you are on this side, um, you're going to come up this little bit narrow aisle um, to receive communion over here. There'll be an elder and uh, one of the pastors probably over here. Um, This is the tricky bit. To get back to your seat, you'll have to kind of weave through. I'm sure a path will be identified. On the other side, you have a much clearer path. If you're on this side, um, you will come up the center, this little aisle, and come up to receive communion and then go uh, back to your seat. Um, There are gluten-free crackers, which I will put on the tables. That'll be closer. Um, There's bread. Uh, You'll take a piece of bread and dip it into the cup, or if you prefer, you can use an individual cup that are on these tables. So I invite the elders to come up. Come, all things are ready.
Let us offer our thanks for the meal that we shared together. Um, I would like you to say, bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord, O my soul. We're going to say that very delightedly, very excitedly throughout the prayer, okay? All right. Brothers and sisters, since the Lord has now fed us at his table, let us praise God's holy name with heartfelt thanksgiving. Bless the Lord, O my soul. That was awesome. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, my soul. And do not forget his benefits. Forgives all our iniquity, who heals all our diseases, who redeems our lives from the pit, who crowns us with steadfast love and mercy. Bless the Lord, O my soul. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love. He does not deal with us, According to our sins, or nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for us. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. As a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion on all who fear him. He did not spare his own son, but gave him up for all of us, and will also give us all things with him. Therefore, my mouth and my heart show forth the praise of the Lord from this time and forevermore. 
Bless the Lord, O my soul. Would you please stand as we sing a song of praise together? We always need a reminder that we would indeed have nothing if God hadn't first given to us. And so all we really have to give to the Lord back is what he's given to us. Never be prideful for the skills you have, for the abilities that God gave you, because you wouldn't have it if he didn't give it to us first. My words fall short. I got nothing new. How could I express all my gratitude? I could sing this song as I often do, but every song must end. So I throw up my hands, praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, but I have nothing else fit for King, except for a heart singing.
Before we share the blessing, just a reminder that in two Sundays we have the congregational meeting right after worship uh, to consider the sense of the congregation as it relates to a possible call to Jane uh, as the next pastor of uh, Bethany Reformed Church. And Pastor Bill Tewinkle from Hope Church will be here. He's the clerk of classes, so he will join us uh, for that meeting. People of God, as you depart this place, may you be filled with the delight of the Lord and the words of delight we've shared in various ways. So again, one more time, say, bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And add a hallelujah. Hallelujah. The grace, mercy, and peace of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and fill you with the kind of delight that only the creator of the universe can grant. And all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. Go in his peace.